Welcome back. The third international 48 millimeter film festival was held this weekend featuring films by Jewish, Muslim and Christian artists about the Palestinian Nakba or catastrophe. That is the creation of the over 100,000 Palestinian refugees after the founding of the state of Israel in 1948. The festival had both new and original films produced especially for the event, including by director Michael Kaminer, who will be joining us on the phone for this discussion. But the festival was not well received by all. To find out, we are joined by I-24 News Senior Editor Ruti C. Nye. Good morning. Good morning, Ruti. But first, let's take a look at the following report by our reporter, Gabrielle Weiniger. 48 millimeters, the international festival on Nakba and return. It's an annual film festival now in its third year, and yet it's still a struggle to stage, even in its homeland. 48 millimeter is a film festival that uh, uh, wants to raise awareness among uh, Jewish Israeli public to the ongoing crimes of the Nakba and for the right of return of Palestinian refugees. But the Tel Aviv Cinematheque is the only theater in the country that's agreed to screen the films, created especially by Israeli and Palestinian filmmakers. Israel's culture ministry is threatening to cut government funding from the Tel Aviv Cinematheque, saying the film screened during the festival may have violated the law. We have um, difficulties in, in uh, persuading, um, I think, uh, decision makers in theaters uh, to uh, put on the stages uh, political theater. Our Minister of Culture is uh, trying to um, scare people from dealing with uh, delicate issues like the 1948 memories. A different narrative is exactly what some viewers came to hear. Showed both sides in a painful way. Nonetheless, many of the seats were empty, and we were the only press present on the second day of the festival. Actress Raida Adon told me why it was so important. The past two months have witnessed surging violence in the region, and for some artists, it is more important now than ever before to continue their work. Times get darker, I'm more challenged. Everybody feels this pressure. We are scared that audiences will not feel free to come. I mean, will not feel um, that they have the, uh, the spirit to come and see um, disputable uh, shows. And yet I feel that this is our duty as artists to, to work on it. And, and we try to cross the borders between both sides, the Palestinians and the Jews. Uh, this is our task. So, Ruti, tell us more about this festival and, and why it's so controversial. Well, um, I think, so. let's get back to basics. 1948, Israel is established. For Israel, obviously, and for the Jews, this is a great uh, celebration. <clears throat> Finally, a homeland of their own after the, you know, um, thousands of years of persecution. But for the Palestinian Arabs who were living here, this is a disaster mm -hmm. because this is land that they, their forefathers have been living on also. Uh, and uh, many of them uh, were either um, you know, expelled from their homes or just ran away because they were frightened. They didn't right. know what was in store. And this created the Palestinian refugee issue, which we've been dealing with uh, for the past uh, almost 70 years. So. Uh, Nakba means disaster, means catastrophe in Arabic, and these films basically conjure up various aspects and memories of this disaster. Now, what the Israeli culture ministry is saying, a minister, a minister essentially, is saying, we will not fund cultural institutions that show films about, uh, you know, that, that somehow delegitimize Israel. Uh, the issue is, of course, and, and not show films that incite to violence and so on, that goes without saying, but the issue basically is, is by the very fact that you are conjuring up another people's pain, mm -hmm. is that in some way, is that a reason 
to A, uh, defund a cultural institution, and B, does that delegitimize de your own right to exist? I would argue it doesn't, but that's just me. Well, also, in art, uh, as, a, as a general medium, it's kind of there are no limits. Uh, it's it's right. self-expression, well, and, and how do you how do you judge some things? They're saying that films may have violated the law. Yeah, well, basically, again, the law that was that was uh, um, that was put in place by by this culture minister, by Miri Regev, which says that you are not allowed to refer to Israel's independence as a catastrophe, mm -hmm. which you know, again, I mean, it's you know, it's if you take it totally literally, then yes, but that is not not, not the point at all. And mm -hmm. look, the government has a right not to want to fund a, a cultural institution if it violates certain laws. That that's right. They're not saying you can't put a put on these films. They're just saying we're not going to fund it. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, I mean, I think I think it's it's totally wrong. And I think the other thing that's really sad about this thing, this show, this VTR that we just saw, is that people are afraid to come. People don't feel they have the legitimacy to come and listen to another people's point of view. Right. And some people said they just were curious to see both sides. Absolutely. And they were just curious to see what's going on. And then as the, the Arab woman said in the in the report, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's important to, to talk. Totally. But people are scared to talk. And I, I would say I do find that to be the case here in Israel. Absolutely. But we are joined out on the phone now from Beit Shemesh by director Michael Kaminer. Good morning, Michael. Thank you for joining us. So tell us about your film and what was the process to produce it for this festival? Good morning. Uh, first, I apologize for my poor English. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, do you hear me, please? Yes, yes, of course. Um, okay. So so just tell us about your film. We want to know more about, about your film. Okay. Um, I'm uh, 51 today. Until around the age of 40, as a child that grew up in this kibbutz, kibbutz Sorah, next to Bet Shemesh, I never heard about this Palestinian village that was sitting uh, on his land, and the kibbutz was established first on uh, his wound, uh, uprooted uh, uh, land. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was amazing when I started to find out that there was 400 people over there who lived there, who didn't fight against nobody, and suddenly uh, got uh, uprooted uh, because somebody decided that its village is on the way to somewhere. And actually, uh, I start to investigate and learn more. Uh, why didn't uh, the establisher of the kibbutz didn't told us the kids uh, never about the place? Uh, every year, twice a year at least, we were traveling as the kids to the mountain to the first point where they established the kibbutz, uh, where it was uh, what we called house of the sheikh, mm -hmm. which was the house of the muhtar of the village actually, but we never understood that his uh, house of him, of a uh, Palestinian, it was like a house of uh, someone from the legend, you know, like Alibaba, mm -hmm. something like this, for me. And uh, it took me a long time to understand first that this was the house of a uh, Palestinian, and eventually to investigate and learn more about the village uh, that you can see, uh, uh, I guess, a photo now, uh, of one of the establishers are only climbing the hill, or mm -hmm. maybe it's in a delay here. Yes, we did see those and images. Um, but you know what? We, we are running out of time. But you know what? Just thank you so much for, for joining us and telling us about this film that seems to really be inspired by a personal experience of, of you growing up here. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael.